Hello, it's Mother's Day this weekend. This is your reminder. You remembered, right? And I thought I'd take this opportunity to skew a relatively simple holiday and make it more existentially complicated because everyone's got their calling. This is mine. Do I have my laptop on my lap because I'm hiding a camel toe or because I can't remember my notes? Who can say? Even I don't know myself. <laughs> If you haven't been here before, hi, my name's Lena. I think you should stick around, it's gonna be fun. But if you are new, there's something you might not know about me is that I worked in the book industry for about nine years. And when you work in books, you end up reading books you never expected to read. Books you might not have picked up yourself. Sometimes you can have horrendous and boring consequences for that, but sometimes you can be pleasantly surprised. I am gonna be 33 soon. What? <laughs> And I'm a woman who has known from an early age that they don't want to be a mother. I'm really lucky in that I have a really lovely relationship with my own mum. Hi, hi mum. But I know that Mothering Sunday brings up loads of complicated feelings for loads of people. And the way I deal with complicated feelings and sort them out in my head is through books. Over the years, I have been assigned or stumbled upon or worked on campaigns around books on motherhood. And I've also stumbled on perspectives and experiences and thoughts that weren't the same as my own. And that was very exciting. And I felt enriched in my decision to not have kids and also understand other people that have complicated relationships with their mothers and the idea of mothering in this whole new way. So I'm very evangelical that even if you're somebody who are like, who's like, I don't think being a parent is in my plot line or you're even like, oh, babies. I think that there's still a really huge value in learning about the experience of being a parent. In this video, we're gonna focus on motherhood in particular because of the thing that's happening this weekend. Because the complicated thing about the status of motherhood is that everybody has a dynamic that's related to it. If you are not a mother, it's very likely that you've had a mother or at least a biological mother and they probably had a mother and the maternal themes of our world, the passive idea of the mother when it comes to the environment, they're, they're all things to unpack that aren't necessarily about you or your experience with motherhood, but they're all incredibly important and incredibly interesting. So in this weird space that I sit between somebody who's read a lot about motherhood, but is not a mum, I thought I would make a little rundown of books that I think it'd be really interesting to look into if you're having any kind of complicated feelings about Mother's Day. I'm also just going to give one-liner learnings of what I've learned from each of these books, so if I can contain what I've learned from it in a sentence, I'm going to try to. Get it? Got it? Good. Also, I'm aware I've probably titled this something incredibly trite, like books that put me off motherhood. <laughs> and I'm kind of kidding, but I'm also not kidding, because I do believe the wider amount of perspectives you read about a topic, the better equipped you are to apply it to your own life. And I really feel like after reading all these books, I'm going in eyes wide open to my fertility choices. And I think that the more we're encouraged to do that, the better outcome it is for parents, non-parents, and the children that we're having. So that's why the title is what it is. Peace out. <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> Repeat visitors to the channel will not be surprised to see this book first on the list, but it also comes chronologically in its experience. So that's why it's at the front as well as it being like one of my favorite books ever. Motherhood by Sheila Hetty. This is a book ruminating on the process of trying to decide whether you want to have children. Respecting the choice that you might be the first generation that gets to choose, but also interrogating yourself and making sure the decision you make is for you and that you're not gonna miss out on something that is really exciting and would benefit you and the world a lot. It's got some killer passages in it. I see people quoting it all the time and there's so many passages that have hit different for different people that I can't list them all, but here, is one of mine. I'll link some more below. Every time I hear that a friend is having a baby, I feel like I'm being cornered by a looming force, more trapped still. You know that babies cannot keep coming forever, but for now they are raining down as heavy as night hail or whatever hits the earth and makes a crater size so much bigger than the thing itself that hit it. There are craters, craters all around and no home is safe enough not to be pummeled to dust by these blessings, by these bits of stardust, these thousand pound babies, a straight at the earth. And this sentence that I feel is the underlying frustration when anyone presses me on the question about whether I wanna have kids. It seems to me like all my worrying about not being a mother came down to this history. This implication that a woman is not an end 
in herself. There's also a really nice quote that I saw somebody quoting on TikTok that I had forgotten was in it about passing spirits between women and when you receive that spirit, it's okay to let it rest, have a generation of rest. The character goes back and forward the whole time experimenting with what her opinion could be and it's a really valuable exercise. I know people that have read that book and then have decided to have children and I've also met a lot of people that have read that book and been clarified in the real conviction that it's not for them. My one-liner learning from this book is think before you leap. An invaluable contribution to humanity, Thank you, Sheila. The next one is Expectation by Anna Hope. This one really stayed with me. It follows three friends in their early 20s when they're living together and having parties, and then 10 years later when they've all taken different paths in regards to motherhood. One is a struggling, postnatally depressed mother, one is trying for a baby and not being able to have one, and one is having another life entirely and is really struggling to relate to the other two. It's a really interesting look at the different ways we resent each other and the opportunities of help that are missed when society comes in and messes up all our crayons about what we really care about and what we really want. I think personally this would be a great book club pick or a buddy read with some of your best friends. I wish I'd have done that because it would have brought up loads of preemptive conversations in my friendship groups around children that I think genuine would have changed the course of our friendships. Highly, highly recommend. I think my one-liner for this book is the grass is always greener so we might as well talk about it. I Am Not Your Baby Mother by Candice Braithwaite. This is a book by the founder of Make Motherhood Diverse and it's part manifesto, part memoir of Candice's experiences with being a black British mother and all of the interplays and parts of her pregnancy and birth story where race did play a role in when it shouldn't have. For example, did you know that black British women are five times more likely to die in childbirth than white women? Black babies have a 121% increased risk of being stillborn and a 50% increase of neonatal death. It talks about the role of fathers who've been racialized as black and the cultural context for that. Um, she says, unconsciously, we erase black fathers from the narrative of black families. This has been the case since slavery when it was customary to take black husbands away from their wives and offspring. She talks about the unconscious trickle-down effects of that and also just generally this idea of giving birth as a business, as a corporate venture, medicalizing pregnancy in this way that we might not have used to and whether that's good or bad. And also just the cultural consumerist expectation of buying buggies in certain ways and using certain brands for the products you put around your baby. It's a short, sharp, really fascinating read, highly recommend. One liner for this book, we're not all pushed out onto an equal playing field. Mothership by Francesca Siegel. This took me to a small room that exists in every single hospital that I had literally never thought about. The Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. Francesca is a fiction writer, so the first thing you need to know about this book is that it's really well written. Very lyrical, very beautiful, in a very confusing way because it's quite a hard topic. Francesca had twins born 10 weeks early and you basically follow her as she enters this liminal space between pregnancy care and the magical world of being a new mother where your children are literally in little glass boxes, you can't really touch them and you're not really sure if they're going to survive. So the bonding experience is incredibly traumatic. You're coming up against death every day and you also like share this really weird friendship with the other mothers that are in the unit. What's really beautiful about this book is that I read it because I was working on a campaign for the paperback. In a freelance capacity, I actually produced and edited a podcast called Motherhood in collaboration with Francesca that we released just as the pandemic was hitting. So it kind of got buried in everything and I'd love if people went back and listened to it because we interviewed lots of experts and her friends that have experienced things from the funny stuff around being in the milking shed, which is what they called the room they all had to go into to express because when you've just given and birth your body starts making milk but you can't give it to the baby in, an, in the normal way so that's like a whole funny experience but there's also obviously incredibly sad experiences and also a haunting example of something I learned about was the practice of donating milk for when you're a person who's lost a baby but your body's still expressing milk and you can make the unbelievably um, selfless donation of sitting there and expressing that milk for as long as you can to give to other babies 
who are struggling. I can't even imagine. This book has so much heart and it's honestly an experience that I didn't think had anything to do with me but realised has everything to do with me because it is so much about grief and liminal spaces and hope and negotiating with your body and feeling like a failure and treading a path you didn't even know was a path until you already dropped halfway onto the path. So yeah, Francesca's brilliant and it's it's a book that I don't want people to miss out on. One line takeaway, birth isn't an in and out experience nor should we expect it to be. Oh, okay. Letters to my daughter, Maya Angelo. This is best consumed in audio, I have to say that first. It is so, it's like one of those life staple books. I mean, it's written by somebody who is literally a master of the art of fiction, so it's beautiful, and it's written in letter form. It starts like this. Dear daughter, my life has been long, and believing that life loves the liver of it, I have dared to try many things. Sometimes trembling, but darling, still, I have only included here events and lessons which I have found useful. I have not told you how I used the solutions, knowing that you are intelligent and creative and resourceful, and you will use them as you see fit. It's a letter of like her life experiences and what she's learned from them, including the complicated relationship she had with her mother. She was partially raised by her grandmother, and she talks about pain and expectation and estrangement when it comes to parenthood as well, which is really interesting interesting, especially when she was having her own son and how she felt about that too. Uh, but she also, it's also really lovely because she addresses it to everyone. She's like, I gave birth to one child, a son, but I have thousands of daughters. You are black and white and Jewish and Muslim and Asian and Spanish speaking and Native American. You are fat and thin and pretty and plain, gay and straight, educated and unlettered. And I am speaking to all of you. It's super hopeful super reassuring. And this is the kind of book that I'd give to somebody in place of a gift from their mother if they're missing their mother or something like that. I think it'd be a really sweet Mother's Day gift for somebody who's grieving or estranged from another, a mother. It's it's really sweet, but like in a very truthful way. It doesn't sugarcoat things. It's not sugary. Something could be sweet, but not sugary. You get what I mean. Anyway, my one line summary for this book is, a mother is a role and not a bloodline. Another book that might have escaped your notice and I'm not having it, is Laura Dockrell's What Have I Done? This came out in April 2020, a bad time to be getting attention for books. Everyone was slightly preoccupied, but this book I just thought was incredible. I love Laura Dockrell's writing anyway, huge fan. That's never been a secret. My love of poetry was reignited by mistakes in the background when I was at uni. If you haven't read Lorelei, you should. But anyway, this is an incredibly written book because Laura Dockrell, again, is an incredible fiction writer, so no surprises there. But this is a memoir about her experience with postpartum psychosis, which is a part of giving birth. We just don't talk about that much. Even though eight out of 10 people who give birth experience problems with their mental illness, even if they've never had problems with mental illness before, it's just something that is not talked about. And I think it's something that people should be aware of when, when they're going into a birthing situation. Come on. The beginning, is a really sweet telling of how she got together with her partner and some of the passages in that just still haven't left me. It's just so, I have very rarely read something that really encapsulates what it's like to be in the early stages of love. I think the only time I've read something that's close to that is like normal people when I really was like, yes, that's how it feels. But then she goes on to talk about giving birth and experiencing postpartum psychosis and being admitted to a psych ward for two weeks after giving birth, separated from her family, separated from her baby and the implications of that. Also, it talks more widely about this expectation to be happy about a part of your life that you're supposed to be ecstatic about all the times, no problems, no questions, no regrets. It's incredibly honest, really funny at points, even when you shouldn't be laughing. And like all around, I feel like if you are thinking about having a child, you should read this book just so you know what some people go through. Even if you don't go through it yourself and you end up not having it, you probably know somebody that has or will. One line of this book, we don't want to talk about it, but we definitely should. And if we're going to, Laura Doc was the person to talk about it with. On Earth, we're briefly gorgeous. Ocean Vyong. Yes, I have let a man on this list because anyone is allowed to talk about motherhood in all of its aspects, even if you haven't experienced it yourself. In this case, it's another letter. This is a letter to his mother who is illiterate and cannot read, recalling moments they've had together, both the nice and the really harsh and difficult about her being a single mother, about the part that the history of his Vietnamese family play in his life and 
her life and it's just a really brutally honest look at healing within families and the complicated layers of race and class that can be put on top of that. I think we do have this idealized idea of the mother in fiction and also in like biblical and religious texts and I don't always think it's healthy to pretend that that is always the case, this idea of the pure perfect, ever well-behaved, ever ethereal, usually white, endlessly caring mother. It, it, it's obviously more complicated than that and this is a really compassionate, beautiful look at being the son of someone who is so much more than just a mother. One liner summary, your experience of being a child of a mother is still part of the motherhood conversation. And then finally, Larger Than an Orange, which is a book I read last year and I just found it really too disturbing to talk about on the internet. But then in retrospect was also like, I should probably mention that this book exists because it is important even if I would never read it again. <laughs> so I don't know if this is a, is this a recommendation? I'm not sure. This is a really brutally graphic look at what it is like to have an abortion and the uncertainty around it and the after effects for your body and also your mind. It's very sparsely written. It's very, very fast to read. And it does feel like a bit of a moment in women's fiction where women are allowed to speak like this about what is happening to their bodies. So this is a fictional account and I do think that everybody should be reading about abortion in some way because I don't think we understand all the many different ways it shows up. But if you don't think you can stomach that, I'm also gonna link a podcast episode that shows loads of different experiences of abortion as well. If you feel like you, do, you haven't really listened enough about the various aspects of abortion, then if this book isn't the way, do find some way because that is also part of the conversation around motherhood and we really need to have it. One line of this book, abortion is part of the human experience, like it or lump it. But I don't know how you'd lump it because it's literally part of the world that you live in. This is obviously not an all encompassing list and there are definitely holes in it. I'm yet to find a book about non-binary parenthood, but I would like to read one. So if you've heard of any that are coming out, out, please leave them below. There's two on my TBR that I would really like to read. One is The Other Mother by Jen Brister and the subtitle is a memoir for all parents, brackets, not just the smug ones. <laughs> and okay, I'll just read this. I'm Jen Brister, a stand-up comedian, middle-aged adolescent and more recently a mum, but I'm not that mum, I'm the other one. Confused? Let's back up a bit. Two years ago, my partner, a woman, we're not solicitors, <laughs> gave birth to twins. Yes, already there's a lot to take in here. It sounds bloody hilarious. It came out in 2021. And something that none of my books that I've recommended include is the experience of IVF. Um, so that's also something that I'd like to add to my wheelhouse of human experiences that I can read about. There's also an anthology coming out soon, I think called The Queer Parent. Bluebird are publishing it, so I'll link that below if you'd like to have a look at that too. But safe to say there is so much more to be said about parenthood and the idea of the mother in the public imagination. So if Mother's Day is making you feel complicated, I'm sure you're gonna find loads of people in the comments that feel the same way as you. Have we exposed the camel toe? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I think you might like one of these videos. This video has been made possible by the Gumption Club who tip me per video to make sure these videos keep happening. And I also don't really need to worry about the algorithm. I can just make what I want. And this is what I wanted to make this week. This is what I thought might be important to talk about. So thank you so much to them. Thanks for watching. Frog Snog out.